Aloha, thank you for taking the time to learn about disaster readiness and how to volunteer at an emergency pet shelter run by the Hawaiian Humane Society. Did you know more than half of Oahu homes have pets? Pets are a part of the family and ensuring their safety and protection, as well as yours, is very important to us. Whether it's a tsunami, tropical storm, hurricane, or flood, emergencies like these could prevent you from getting home or lead to an evacuation. Shelters designated just for people will not allow pets. So the Hawaiian Humane Society has teamed up with state and city emergency management services to ensure shelter for your pets. Humane Society run shelters are often adjacent to public shelters in public school buildings or other central locations in your neighborhood. The first step to helping others is to make sure your family is safe first. Ensure that you have a plan in place with supplies and an emergency kit. And of course, your family is always welcome to be with you when you volunteer. Because disaster can strike without notice, immediate mobilization by the Hawaiian Humane Society to keep pets and people together is essential. As a volunteer, this overview will give you all the information you need if you're called to duty. Being a part of an emergency pet shelter operation means that you'll be helping in a wide variety of ways where your aloha and love for animals and people come into play. This training video will highlight the many components of running a shelter, including setup, staffing, daily operations, and demobilization. Here's how it will work. County officials will advise the Hawaiian Humane Society when and which shelters to open. The society will then contact you to see if you are available. If you can help, you'll be placed on standby. Details regarding length of shift and how to contact staff will be provided once more information becomes available. Be ready to let the society know what dates and times you're available. Pet shelters are open 24-7. When you arrive, say hello to those nearby who are running the shelter for people so they know who you are. Check out their operation so you're acquainted with their process. Know where the restrooms are, parking lots, and more. Remember, you're never alone. You will always have an on-call contact person available to you at the Hawaiian Humane Society. Depending on the nature of the disaster, your shift may be longer than anticipated. We need you to be flexible and willing to help for the entire duration. Getting set up. Typically, Humane Society staff will be there to handle initial setup, but just in case, you want to be able to handle this on your own. First, Stop and take a few photos before moving any furniture or fixtures to document the condition of the room. And note any potential hazards, like a broken window or anything that may look amiss. Contact us if the environment seems unsafe or if there's an issue that needs to be addressed. Now, it's time to inventory supplies. Review your supply kit that's been provided and review the checklist to make sure everything is there. If something is missing, make a note and contact your society representative as soon as possible. The Hawaiian Humane Society will have very limited emergency supplies to offer pet owners in need. These items should only be used in case of an emergency. Determine the best areas to set up for cats, dogs, and other pets, and be sure that these areas are not near any glass windows that might shatter. In order to protect the floors, place plastic liners down. Owners should bring their own pet housing and should be the only ones to handle their animals. Keep pets separated by species to reduce stress and anxiety. Envision an owner taking a dog out of their crate and walking him or her to the front door. You wouldn't want them to walk their dog in front of cats that may already be frightened. Location signs for various species are in the kit. Put them up in the designated areas clearly for everyone to see. Create new ones if a sign is missing. Other areas that need to be set up are a cleaning area, trash area, and a registration table. Set up a specific area just for cleaning. Set up a registration or check-in area. Review and familiarize yourself with the administration process. Make sure you have all your forms, pens, clipboards, and necessary paperwork. If anything is missing, report it. Welcome and pet registration. Owners and their pets may arrive distraught so welcome them with aloha and always stay calm. Make sure you fill out all the paperwork accurately. 
The goal is to have all animal and owner information documented before a pet is housed. Keep the admissions process orderly and standardized. There will be a check-in and check-out log for you to complete with the owner. All owners should bring a 7 to 10 day supply of food and water in sealed containers. Crate or carrier for each pet in which he can stand up and turn around in. Leash and collar with updated ID and license tags. Bedding, towels and toys. Treats, food and water bowls. And can opener. Medications, grooming supplies, cleaning supplies for crates and litter boxes, cat litter with a litter pan, vaccination records and other paperwork and veterinary information. Lastly, photographs of their pet. Here are some important rules to know. You will be required to give all pet owners the following. A printed admissions number, an agreement that outlines rules and requires their signature. Read the agreement ahead of time so you're clear of what the society is requiring a wristband with an admissions number to wear that allows the pet owners access to the shelter during visiting hours, and an admissions discharge form so that both the shelter and the owner have a record. All animals must be contained for their safety and comfort in their designated areas. And while owners are asked to bring a crate for cozy quarters that's comfortable for their pet to stand up and turn around in, some may arrive without one. We will provide one if we have one available. A card will be displayed on each crate to informally assess the situation. You will determine which color is appropriate. Green for friendly and safe, yellow means fearful and unsure, and red aggressive. Go with your instinct when deciding which color to use. Different people will rate the animals with different colors based on their comfort levels. Convey to the owners that they should limit handling and visits to keep the animal calm. This is to ensure safety and reduce stress. Remember, both the owner and their pet are stressed. Keep a close eye on this process. It is not uncommon for a pet to panic and resist going into their crate. Once the pet is safely in its crate, cover the crate with a sheet or towel, which has a nice calming effect. As the evening goes on, it is best to leave crates covered and allow their animals to rest. If their pet seems anxious or stressed, Resist the urge to pet or comfort the animal, as they are probably happier alone. Contact a pet's owner if there is an issue that needs to be addressed. Visitation. The shelter manager will set up visitation hours. After those hours are designated, post a sign where it can be clearly viewed at the admissions desk. Only an owner with a wristband ID may visit. Owners can walk their dog, clean their crates, and feed their pet. If the owner takes the pet out of the crate, it must be noted on the daily check-in out log form. Incidents. If there is an incident, a form must be filled out. Please familiarize yourself with this form. Incidents range from injuries to a piece of broken equipment or furniture. It is important to record all incidents. Take photos if you're able, then report any urgent incidents to the Hawaiian Humane Society. You will find the forms in your supplies. Leave the completed forms in the tub. The society staff will review them later. If it's time for checkout, only the owner or authorized person with a wristband ID who checked the animal in can check out their pet. Always check that the owner and animal match. Update relevant forms and the admissions log and note what day and time the pet was checked out. The admission and discharge forms will need to be signed by the owner. Before the owner walks away, Review all the forms to ensure everything is filled out accurately and legibly. Check the admissions form to see if the owner provided any supplies, and if so, return them to the owner. Make sure to call your Hawaiian Humane Society contact at the close of your shift. If you will be shutting down the shelter, start by placing supplies neatly in the designated area. We will contact you ahead of time to advise where they need to go. Ensure that the equipment and floors are cleaned and disinfected. Cleaning supplies will be provided. You should do a final walkthrough of the shelter to ensure all areas are cleaned and left as you found it when you arrived. During the walkthrough, take photos and document any damage. If you are able to transport supplies back to the society, this is always helpful. Please check with the society before leaving. Your help makes Hawaii a better place for the animals. Welcome to our team and mahalo for your support of the Hawaiian Humane Society.